Is there anyone new? Somebody who wasn't here in the last class? Uh, yes, miss. Okay. What we discussed on Tuesday was about grading criteria, about how to handle the assignments of this course. Uh, because we'll be discussing films and media content quite quite often. So I did ask students to think about uh, visual content and textual content in films while doing their assignments. So it means that I haven't given any assignment so far, but sooner or later when I give the assignment, I do want that students uh, uh, familiarize themselves with the content of the films and what kind of dialogues characters have in the films. So I think that is something that we will need uh, while doing the assignments because I like to um, see that students have briefly mentioned summary of uh, the film or the play that we are discussing. Uh, briefly means three to five lines, maximum six, seven lines, not anymore, like short summary of media content. And the other thing that I said that uh, while discussing media content, it would be useful to discuss uh, dialogues and scenes in detail, not the summary in detail, but a particular scene in detail. All right. Do you have uh, any questions so far? And um, I think in last class, I really wanted to you guys to introduce yourself to me. What I learned, there were some students from psychology class, some from DLA, and some, I think, very few from uh, film and TV department or SMC. So perhaps we have equal number of students from three schools at present. So. Uh, did you understand what I said? Which department are you coming from? Yes, miss, I understood. I'm from um, a film and TV, theater film and therapist. Okay, and which semester are you in? Um, the fourth semester. The fourth semester, okay, not bad at all. Have you studied any theoretical course so far? Uh, yeah, we're studying uh, film and theory. Uh, two classes, scaling and Introduction to film and TV? Yes. And uh, did that dad alum teach that course? Yes. Okay. All right. So it means at least you know very well uh, how to uh, talk about film scenes and dialogues or how, yes. to, how to write a scene or a dialogue. Right? Yes. So in this course, we will need scene descriptions and discussion of dialogues in classroom and also while attempting the assignments, okay? So it's okay, very yes. important Thank that we, we just keep track of these things. Um, all right. So did everyone uh, get a chance to go through the, through the articles that I have posted? Did you did you read this article? Did you get time to read this article? Yes, yes. All right. So this article is by Nancy Jennings, and I think that I had mentioned in the last class that uh, the both of these articles are uh, are the result of some research that a German television corporation conducted. Uh, TV. TV channel's name is Television. So this research uh, was conducted for Television by risk professionals. Okay. So Nancy Jennings and it shows a number of uh, 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 names of a, a few other people here uh, who have collectively conducted this research. I said this is not a complete document of research. It's only a summary of research and it's a short summary. So what they did that they conducted research 
uh, of um, you know they they spoke to children from a few different countries it says seven countries here it describes at the top right here that uh, this research is is result of an artistic activity uh, and through that artistic activities children tend to describe their narrative identity so students were asked to make drawings of self and children belong to seven different countries uh, which means that their uh, cultural background is very different and cultural background also includes their national identities and also uh, their um, family identity or religious identity so identity formation is something that uh, that becomes you know it's not if you if i ask you what is your identity so what would you normally answer what is your identity can somebody try describing what is her or his identity ji um sorry uh, to see your names i have to turn on the camera because somehow i can't see uh, names in microsoft ji ji danya can you try describing yourself or binish or mashal how would you describe your own identity who are you um ma'am i i think that our identity is continuously affected and changed by where we are and what is going on around us uh, our, our surroundings form our identities uh, and uh, being in this society my identity uh, is a woman and then it is also attached to where i belong from the family from the home and yeah the institutions where we are taught it, it all all these things are forming us each day so we grow here and that's how our identities are formed by our everyday experiences so yeah all right this is what this article is precisely saying that our identities are formed uh, through everyday experiences so binish can you also try describing who you are and what makes yes, you yes yes miss i would say that i am a 21 year old pakistani muslim a woman living in um lahore and yeah i think that's how i would maybe say it all right and how does lahore affect you so i must say that what effect does lahore have on you uh this it's well it's a city where i reside in and um partly some of my identity is formulated uh, through that all right can you try adding something to it uh yes i um, Uh, I am Mr. Kishan. Yes, I specifically want to know about Lahore. What Lahore? What role Lahore has in your identity construction? Uh, Mr. Kishan, for example, um, uh, it is the place where I uh, study, and like my university is located there. I live there, and um, it is a place where I belong, basically. can you try describing the place uh i miss like the place where i live in no your identity in relation to the place um this like uh basically like my uh, identity is like formulated uh 
the place, like for example, I. Mm -hmm. oh. no, uh, I was just trying to understand if you feel uh, how, you know, like how Lahore changes your identity and how would you be different if you were living in Islamabad or Karachi or in uh, Sikhs uh, or in Skardu? Uh, I think that uh, it does affect our personality and the way we are because Lahore uh, is a big city and there uh, are different types of people around you when you go out of your house and then there are schools where you find people from diverse backgrounds uh, a university in my class there are people from different cities but uh, on the other hand if, we, if i say that uh, I, if i take my village name and i say that i live here so it will also have an effect on me if i live in a small town or a small village and the people there will be of the same kind probably and their beliefs and their you know everyday practices would be the same whereas in a bigger city you go, when you go out you experience a lot of different things each day you meet a lot of different people even when we are in school we meet different kind of, there are different kinds of students with us and we learn so much from them too and university experience is also the same way that way. So I do think that living in a big or just a man, you know, her personality is like that. She's from a small town, she's from a village, and this girl is like this, she is from this big city. And you know, the they, they are differences and the, the place where we live, it also has a huge impact on us. That is where we live. Okay. All right, great. Uh, I think this this makes sense that uh, the place we live in and the city we live in has is different. So a village looks very different, and people in village uh, have different life than people in in the cities. And naturally, that that uh, affects our behavior, our lifestyles, our associations, and uh, what we do and naturally it has an effect on our personality construction right so this first article is actually saying that they are talking to children of age group 5 to 19 from seven different countries so because these uh, uh, children belong to different countries they also have different religion at times and their family associations and their cultures are very different so these children, you see some of them are very small and other are adolescents. So this article actually just tells you about their inner worlds because uh, the artistic activity was actually trying to explore their inner world, how children behave and how they talk. And this article actually uh, mentions that uh, the researchers were talking to both genders, male and female. Uh, this uh, this does not part particularly focus on third gender. It just says we spoke to children. So genders are not identified, but children do talk about uh, their experiences and uh, both girls and boys are included. Okay. So what uh, in the in the middle it says the method of research. Right. It talks about, uh, you know, what they did. They asked the children to get brown papers, large size papers. So if you want to buy uh, brown paper yourself, you can buy it, you know, like uh, in in feet. So ch children actually uh, trace their own life size outlines on the papers. And after that, they were asked to draw something about self. So children were actually drawing images of um, their experiences, their associations, etc. They were given instructions. They, some children filled inside the drawings. Uh, you can see there are certain body outlines uh, here. This is a body outline, but only the head is uh, represented differently. And they, there are some other body outlines, like children uh, were lying down on the floor and drawing their own body outlines. So you can see how uh, does this look like a girl's body outline? And it seems uh, she she was lying on the floor and somebody uh, drew the body outline like this. Uh, only her hands are, uh, her arms are up in the um, upwards. 
she has extended them upwards and feet are just their rest of the body is just straight and how these two other boys are lying on on the floor and drawing their own body line outline right only this body outline is slightly different you can see uh, this boy has put uh, one arm on one side and the other on the other side so he's lying sideways most of them were lying either on their torso uh, you know or on their belly i mean it it seems that's how the drawings were uh, drawn and children are drawing uh, their own bodies slightly differently and after that they carry on the artistic activity okay uh, after they drew these drawings they were also asked to describe or discuss uh, what they had done which means the researchers conducted their interviews uh, you know so this research is based on two kind of activities as it says right here like uh, for each participant a full life size outline of their body was traced participants laid down on their individual papers in stillness listening to instructions to think about what makes their identity what makes you afterwards each each participant drew their inner worlds in and around their body outline so as i said that uh, they could use their full sheet they could draw inside or they could draw outside uh, the body outline and express uh, and discuss what their inner worlds were like right so participants were allowed to talk write or draw so they were talking writing and drawing and after that uh, whatever the researchers had recorded they analyzed how children were feeling and what their inner worlds reflected and they tried to understand similarities because of their age groups and differences also because of their age groups and because of their genders and because of their location you know because if children were coming from colombia their their behavior was different from children who were coming from thailand okay so you can understand that um, uh, children of different age groups participated it says youth 63 participated from germany united states united kingdom and mexico uh, experienced typical family life at home so children had experienced typical life means normal life at home uh, but their drawings do not show uh, as such that their lives were quite normal but apparently they thought they had selected not normal children uh, out of these 63 17 are from Ger germany 11 from us 6 from uk uh, 29 from mexico uh we can assume that these children are probably present in germany because they were children on asylum in germany and this research is conducted by a german tv channel okay uh children from different regions experience different and often difficult situations and these difficult situations are showing in drawings particularly uh the drawing here you can understand that both of these drawings are actually showing uh you know that children had experienced extreme level of difficulty in their lives okay so one objective of research i said earlier was you know like uh, because the tv channel is conducting this research they were trying to find out how children what kind of children are their viewers and what kind of content would be best for these children so normally adults can uh, select uh, content for children parents uh, selected quite often parents guide children what to find what to watch and what to read when uh, when they are infants children parents may be turning on baby television for them or cartoon network or some other channel like disney uh, because they thought children can grow up watching tv on these channels okay uh, through this uh, activity when they learn about children they can plan future programs for children because they are learning from children about their experiences and also their needs uh, 
they are saying that some of these children who had faced difficult situations are it says children living in turkey are refugees from syria five youths from colombia formerly belonged to armed groups on the margins of the law so you can understand that children family background is also reflecting on their inner worlds and their behavior and the environment they have been going through right and after mentioning the children from colombia and syria where they were exposed to law and order and uh, war situations uh, uh, jennings mentions children from thailand and she says those children were diagnosed with hiv and you can understand if it, uh, how a child would be feeling and what his inner world would be like if he has been diagnosed with hiv and apparently the kids uh, families uh, both parents had already died because of hiv so you can understand the kid was also an orphan okay so uh, this research actually gives insight into the inner worlds of the children uh, it says uh, the question was simple uh, like draw your inner worlds express who you are what is your identity but the answers look very complex identity has been defined by different levels of self representation we can understand that all these images are actually showing how children self represented themselves and self representation uh, here she has um, uh, jennings has mentioned uh, there are at least three sides to self representation one is individual which means your personal concept or how you differentiate yourself from others because all of us like saying and believing that we are different right and second is relational like individual who i as i am and relational means uh, self concept formed by connections and relational roles with others which can be family members or friends and third is collective identity which is in relation to society at large okay so definitely the drawings are a reflection on identity of these three types which is individual relational and collective any question so far no miss okay yeah. so after that it says that um, uh, children had internalized and evolving story of the self and a person constructs to make sense and meaning out of his or her own life so whatever we learn from three types of relationships tries we try to make a sense of our lives out of these three types of relationships sometimes we may feel connected and we sometimes we may feel alienated to what we learn from others through relational or collective relationships so this is actually pointing to uh, our reaction or uh, choices uh, against the three types of relationships all right so they are saying the children made artworks and following they, that they interviewed the children uh, and asked them to describe their narrative to give to provide their narrative identity creatively and openly represent themselves their stories helped us better understand what their inner worlds are like and how they make meaning of themselves because meanings is something we all need right so what meanings are we creating about our own identities through our relationships with these different type of people now representation of the self model uh, she has uh, jennings has divided it into a different categories right for example she says here that uh, children uh, because they were of age groups 5 to 19 so um, you could see how they were representing themselves sorry what happened to it okay. um, all right so younger the children 
there was a greater tendency of representing self through reproducing the actual self right so they are saying that children actually represented themselves through drawings in five different ways number one they were reproducing the actual self which means they were drawing something that looked similar to them it could be done through dress right because it says here the child from mexico he was wearing a black shirt and black pants and pants with a red stripe on the day he participated so he created himself as as somebody who was wearing similar dresses so drawing was actually in similar dress so he reproduced himself his actual self right and the youngest for the uh, so you can see that this is one of the youngest participants or for the youngest participants it was also a difficult task because as you grow up your um, emotional feelings also develop and your relationships develop and you learn more about yourself as you are growing up so she's saying that it was difficult for younger children to re reproduce their inner self or to express who they were um, so another side was that their aesthetics were also different uh, with their age groups and uh, so after reproducing of reproduction of actual self they were children who were expressing themselves through different symbols of the culture so we associate with uh, uh, with cultural artifacts and these artifacts sometimes have very uh, a lot of importance in our lives for example uh somebody may be very traditional and may want to wear a dupatta all the time and somebody may be modern so you can understand that children will uh, react differently to cultural uh, elements or artifacts right so uh, the young boy from mexico reproduced his his actual self and there was another 14 year old girl from united states who painted her cheeks in red color right and when they interviewed her about it she said i have rosy cheeks i was naturally born with them so it means that for this girl from uh, united states her rosy cheeks were very important and she was strongly interested and uh, you know that she re liked reproducing herself as it is like the boy from mexico the young girl from us she was 14 year old she also reproduced the actual self so this is one of the strategies so uh, uh, jennings is actually pointing to five different strategies right right so the second strategy is appropriating symbols of culture which means what is the what is important for them as children uh, how they connect to culture or the ways of life they are growing up with so it means that uh, even if we have different choices uh, we are very well aware of what what is there in our surroundings right some children would use symbols from their country to reveal their inter inner world child from germany uh, mexico thailand drew the flags inside his body and he said i am uh, passionate about my country i have future dream the the child said first of all i painted the mexican flag because i am patriotic in future i want to be president of mexico so you can see that this child is actually drawing the flag inside his body not outside the body outline but inside the body outline so national identity is very strong part of this child it's not essential that any other child was um, particularly identifying himself with the country flag or national elements but this particular child from mexico did uh, mention that he is very patriotic and country and had a very strong relationship with the country to the extent that he wanted to become the president of the country now the next she says that uh, two children from syria and two children from germans how many children are they all together huh 
114 okay so out of 114 children four children two from syria and two from germany they drew spongebob right so you are drawing who you are and how you feel and how does spongebob represent your inner self so the they are saying uh, you know like four children drew spongebob and there were other children who were drawing lego uh, i'm sure everybody is familiar with lego pieces so children were drawing lego pieces inside their body they were trying to show their association with the sport or any other activity they were they had in their daily lives and some other children drew nerf uh, and children from disney and us also uh, children from germany also used disney and us uh, symbols or other kind other brand names or logos to narrate their own identity so you can understand that for the children of age groups 5 to 19 brands also become very important and you may you may know that sometimes people say oh i like zara's dresses i always buy from zara right or people may might say uh, that uh, i like to buy uh, dresses from kesaria or working woman etc so these can also be part of their identity construction and how they you know uh, they have a strong association with their inner worlds some children apart from you know like uh, reproducing the actual self or connecting with the, the culture around you children had also developed naming self strategies for for themselves uh, jennings says that a youth from colombia wrote the motto not one step back liberation or death so you can say that uh, uh, she has she has mentioned earlier that children from uh, Colombia were exposed to law and order situations and children from Syria were exposed to war situation uh, as both the children um, uh, ch as children from both the countries were refugees their inner worlds has showed a strong reflection to law and order situation or the war situation in their country so this child from Colombia is saying not one step back uh, it also probably reflects the kids rela relation to media stories or uh, to the stories that are discussed at home that uh, parents uh, whether they were living in colombia or abroad they were discussing stories at home or they were talking about war situation in syria so the children ended up having this motto in life not one step back liberation or death so you can understand the children are very small but their inner world is showing their relationship with arms and law and order situation or uh, the situation in their countries and what this uh, child did he is inside uh, he is writing this motto inside the body outline and uh, another youth from mexico wrote life is inside us outside of her body shape so he's writing this motto outside the body outline and saying life is inside life is not outside so basically he, though the kid did not write life is inside he had a strong relationship for in uh, with the inside life um, so these are the three strategies and uh, then she says a 15 year old boy from us he said uh, he filled the artwork with words and phrases this child from colombia is drawing the flag right and another child is not drawing flag or flowers or football or anything else what he is doing he is only writing words inside his body and when they asked him the kid said i i say i don't know a lot and this is what goes through my mind when i say that that while we are growing up sometimes we do not know precisely who we are 
and uh, there can be elements around us or thoughts around us that create conflict in our mind or we get exposed to contradicting ideas right for example uh, we may be told that we are pakistanis and our culture is like this and that and at the same time we may see culture uh, on tv channels that shows different side of life for example in a tv program one pakistani girl may be wearing uh, the traditional dress and another may be wearing uh, modern dress so it will create uh, you know these uh, these two images will contradict each other right so this kind of contradiction may sometimes create this thought i don't know i don't know a lot so because we are in a process of learning about us so she's saying that that's how children express their inner world so one child actually was writing words instead of drawing anything and he kept saying i don't know i don't know down the length of his outline he wrote i don't know and he explained that he darkened the letters i don't know purposefully because uh despite knowing the inside is telling me i do know i just i am just trying to avoid the question or the situation or the conversation so it it apparently shows the kid was not interested in expressing about uh, his self right uh he, they said it's a 15 year old boy he does not wish to talk about himself uh purposefully so he is writing inside the body i don't know and at the same time he is saying i am trying to avoid the question so you can see that uh, the identity is um, slightly uh, you know like uh, he's he's confused or he doesn't want to talk about it or he's shy so that that is how his narrative identity is described and uh, revealing self pillars is the fourth strategy for 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 identifying or constructing the identity uh, which means children and adolescents felt a strong connection to nature so nature becomes uh, self pillars uh which means drawing flowers fish leaves rainbow and rays of sunshine so these probably also reflect on their experiences of nature or natural world so 15 year old boy from us drew the shape of the place after which he is named right so he felt connected to the place because of his name uh some people use uh, names uh you know like for example when we hear jamil delvi have you heard of jamil delvi do you know who he is jamil delvi is a filmmaker who produced the film jina so i i used his name just to explain that he is using delvi which is delhi so he is using name of a place as part of his full name because he he associates himself with the place so this is in this study a 15 year old from a uh, 15 year old boy from the us drew the shape of the place inside his body because he he feels he is strong he has a strong relationship with the place and a 16 year old girl from thailand drew a man holding the hand of a child standing next to him right so the the man was apparently uh, the father and in the interview the girl said this is my family my family is very important for me i am my father's hope my father is the one i have if i didn't have my father i wouldn't have anyone so so is it clear how uh, children reveal self pillars so this is this part has only talked about uh, their location and their immediate family members so location means where you live for example lahore 
may be presently part an important self pillar for you uh, because you mentioned the horror and uh, apart from that uh, family has a strong role here the kid actually drew, drew her father's image next to her and she said she is her his only hope the fifth and last pillar is through you know like uh, representing the self through actions and experiences right so here a child is actually drawing uh, soccer soccer or football and uh, to represent uh, himself and another is drawing swimming and fishing kind of uh, things uh, showing that uh, what is important for the kid all right so i i think uh, this is uh, quite interesting here that a girl from colombia uh, she unknowingly uh, drew a lot of leaves covering her chest so inside the body outline she covered her chest with leaves and she said every time someone is killed they are covered with leaves so it's very uh, strange uh, you know like a drawing when you asked her you you are wondering that she has covered with leaves uh, it's not saying sewing is saying if the leaves were fresh leaves or withered leaves but it's just saying that the girl covered her chest with leaves and when they asked her she said every time somebody is killed is covered with leaves so you can understand the kids were exposed to violence and weapons as it says here so violence and weapons experience was actually reflecting in their drawings and was part of their inner world uh, so stu uh, children had uh, used uh, different kind of general frameworks i i suppose you can understand what general frameworks means because if they are uh, associating associating themselves with families and places so if we are saying i am a pakistani or if i'm saying oh i am a lahori or a punjabi or a, or somebody from bhawalpur so it's 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 a general framework right and if we are um, associating with specific elements uh, then it says you know like uh, we have specific uh, relationship to specific situations or experiences that that actually form our uh, inner selves or our identities after defining the five uh, discussing the five pillars uh, five uh, strategies for defining oneself uh, she is talking about you know like uh, what impact their age groups had on their drawings or descriptions of inner selves uh she says that uh, you know so the rem the remaining part of uh, this short reading is divided into experiences concerning age groups 5 and 6 after 5 and 6 the next one 5 5 and 6 is pretty sm small she is talking about only uh, children of two age groups like 5 year old and 6 year old after that uh, she starts looking at children of 7 8 and 9 year uh, age and then tweens which means 10 to 12 years and uh, after the tweens she looks at children of age group 13 to 19 you can see that she probably has most children in this part because it's covering i think about 7 years uh, these uh, the, the first few are very short like 3 years max at a time uh, the the child from um, the children of age group 5 to 6 drew colored items uh, placed within their body outlines and when they asked them about the color items they said uh, they, these were the things that they liked or disliked so children of 5 to 6 years age group are very particular about what they like and what they don't like of course these are imp important for others also but uh, as they were describing their inner worlds uh, children of age group 5 to 6 specifically men talked about their likes and dislikes uh, they are saying that um, the child from us drew smiley faces of the sun because i like to he said uh, when they uh, when being asked what has shaped themselves children 
uh, were talking about their experiences of amusement parks and uh, Legoland and other places. So younger the children, they were talking more about their likes and dislikes and about their visits to places in particular, right? And uh, some children did show traces of media experience. A young, a six-year-old boy from Great Britain uh, drew himself as a rainbow ninja, proclaiming in his interview that I am a rainbow rin ninja. And uh, I think that characters do become very important for children of uh, age group five and six. Uh, I, I don't know if you rec what you rec what you can recall from your own childhood, but I, I believe that in the past couple of decades, Powerpuff Girls was very popular and you may have watched the program. So I, I remember when my own daughter was very young, like three, four years old, uh, we, we sometimes did ask her, Sabine, are you a Powerpuff Girl? So you can say that uh, because she liked Powerpuff Girls, she specifically liked Dora and uh, she liked Dora's adventures. And, uh, you know, you may perhaps remember uh, some of these characters. Do you remember uh, any of these characters or can you talk about any ex media experiences or your own experiences uh, from childhood? I believe you, you have lived all these ages, age groups. Um, right, I never asked how old you are, but here it says children of age group 5 to 19. Is anyone here younger than 19? Hello? Ji, aapko samaj mein aa rahe? Main to non-stop bole ja rahi I think it would be nice if you uh, uh, just... Uh, mention what you the, uh, talk, understand about different texts or you add uh, your own experiences as we go on. Uh, jo, ne jo five strategies discuss ki thi, can you can you relate to any of these five strategies? For example, reproducing uh, your own self. Some, sometimes I do ask uh, students to uh, you know, like uh, I, I, if we were in a face-to-face -face classroom, I would have actually given you a body outline to draw yourself. But uh, did you try, try drawing some something for this class about yourself? I normally do it without uh, reading the article, so it's it's interesting to see how people represent themselves. Uh, no, miss, like I will draw. Okay, but uh, can you try describing yourself? Can you try, uh, I think, uh, let's, uh, for five minutes or so, try describing our own uh, inner words. How would you describe yourself? Can, can you try? Um, Miss, I think before this class, at least the idea that I had in mind regarding identity of a person was that um, uh, the context in which we're living in, like if the situation changes, like if we, right now I'm living in Lahore, but if I move to another country, then my role would change, like my roles change in different social situations. If I'm a student, my role would be different. And if I'm at home, so my role would be different. It won't really have an effect on my personality or something. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yes, the culture of Lahore does obviously affect your personality, uh, but that's changed. Like, that that is something that we may have done. But in the essence of a person, uh, beliefs, whatever values they remain the same. Like, maybe the values and who same way. Yeah, maybe the inner traits and and those I identify as. 
important character, you know, uh, character, of my identity. So, I, if someone asks me to explain myself, yeah, traits, my characteristics, I, you know, I, I get them to my beliefs, so, yes. Uh, Noor, um, uh, Jennings men mentioned five different strategies. Uh, which strategy you think would relate, uh, you would use to exp to describe your own, uh, you know, uh, narrative identity? She mentioned five strategies. One was reproduction of actual self. One was, uh, you know, like a strategy of explaining your inner self through culture. And um, I believe the, you know, uh, uh, the third one uh, focused more on uh, naming strategies and the fourth on uh, you know like your your relationship with location and family and the fifth uh, fifth focused on representing self through actions and experiences for example your interest in sports you know uh, or uh, things like that so number 4 was about nature and family and number 5 was uh, your actions and uh, the third was about mottos that you have in your life. Not one step back was the third one. So I'm just asking. So can you say two strategies? The, uh, she mentioned five strategies. First was reproduction of actual self. Second was through cultural symbols. The third one was about nature and the nature and uh, family and you know like your environment which means both location and family and the fifth no, 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 no. Uh, uh, third one hai, wo naming strategies hai na? she said that uh, t t like the kid from uh, Columbia said not one step back. So a Palestinian kid would perhaps also talk about uh, certain mottos in life. So she said that uh, yes. pe people use naming strategies. And fourth was, was about self pillars because of nature or location or family members. So your immediate environment. And the fifth one was about uh, actions and experiences. So I'm just asking, you know, like what you described just now. Uh, um, uh, naturally, in this class, you're not uh, right now as we are talking about it. Uh, what, how would you, what would you say if you are reproducing your actual self? How would you describe yourself if you were asked to reproduce uh, something about? your actual self, you would probably talk about what you are wearing right now. For example, I would probably say, oh, I am wearing a Pakistani shalwar pajama, kind, you know, like uh, pajama and shirt sort of thing. So that would be reproduction of actual self. And uh, elements of culture means that uh, if I have done something which is very relevant to the culture, so uh, the reproduction of actual self and culture would probably mix up at this point because I mentioned pajama and uh, Pakistani style shirt. So I would say that these are elements related to culture. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm yes. saying that if, if I ask you to describe yourself, what kind of, uh, what would you pick up? You know, Miss, I think the fifth one was when you explained the self through actions and experiences, because I feel that um, in in your life you kind of develop your personality and a sense of yourself through your reactions or your response towards uh, you know things that are occurring in your in your life. So I would pick the fifth one. Okay, so uh, I agree with Taka too that. Uh, Whatever yeah. actions we, we are in a very different, we grow up in a very different setting. But when we grow up, when we start experiencing the world 
outside the walls of our homes and our safe zones like our parents and our family we grow uh, out to be very different people not like our mothers or not like who you know uh, brought us up and not even like what we were taught sometimes there there are the experiences like uh, when we were studying war literature or when we uh, studied african literature so there were a lot of things that people were becoming because of what they were going through what the what interested them and how things were turning out all right so you so you can understand that it is probably um, a reflection of the age group as well uh, you know because uh, the article is focusing on children of age group 5 to 19 but it also means that uh, the last age group uh, is you know like teen and above uh, probably at this stage we we focus more on our actions and experiences and they perhaps describe our identity better so yes anyone else how would how would you what kind of strategy would you pick up to describe yourself jangir Uh, Jangir, can you hear us? All right. Anybody else? Hello, sir. Yes, Jangir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, which department are you coming from? Which school? Ma'am, I'm from, from SMT. Okay, you are from SMT. You know, you have a lot of media exposure. Just try. um telling me which of the strategy you think you will use uh to describe yourself right now we have seen five different strategies uh discuss them slightly so which strategy suits you ma'am uh, i think uh, uh name self strategy jisme aapne bataya ki family culture wagaira se relate karte hain na wo चौलिसान का इलाका है तो यही से मतलब मेरी सारी स्कूलिंग भी इसी इलाके की है तो इसी लिहाज से वो जो मतलब अभी तक मुझ में है लैंग्वेज का भी थोड़ा बहुत मतलब इधर से मैं गया था तो अभी तक उस तरह इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज भी मेरी नहीं क्लियर हुई तो ये चीजें अभी तक मुझ में है कुछ खामियां हैं कुछ लैक ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस भी है इस तरह की चीजें अभी तक ये मेरी पर्सनैलिटी में साथ साथ रही है क्योंकि मैं थोड़ा बैकवर्ड एरिया से बिलोंग करता था थोड़ा और एग्रीकल्चर बैकग्राउंड है तो वही सारी बातें मैं कहीं पे बैठता हूँ तो मेरे पास करने के लिए भी उसी रिलेटेड बातें होती हैं और एग्रीकल्चर से रिलेटेड होंगी या अपने इलाके से रिलेटेड होंगी या उसी तरह की चीजों को मैं डिस्कस करता हूँ खाना में मेरी पसंद भी वही है ज्यादा पाकिस्तानी साइड पे है और दूसरे कंट्रीज का नहीं लाइक करता मैं इसी तरह की चीजें हैं because you are talking about uh, your location and uh, you are talking about agriculture from that place so that's why i'm saying okay, you are using yes, you are using two strategies right now you are you, you are talking about naming strategies and you are also talking about self pillars right so self pillars mein yes. agriculture is very important for you or ye uh, tarah ki cheez hai so it means ke you are talking about two strategies right now ji anybody else yes um this i would go with the fifth strategy and i agree with anna as well our experiences shape us and yeah basically what we go through makes us who we are and our identity all right okay uh, all right so the minute anybody talk, starts talking about uh, family or how important family is uh, for him or her so naturally it means ke aapki jo strategies hain usme other strategies will instantly be added right 
all right so i can understand you know like uh, age group jo hai that has a very important relationship uh, with se- with the selection of a strategy uh, for discussing the self or describing the self okay all right let's see what is the relationship of age to uh, representing self uh she is saying that uh, as i said earlier that children of age group 5 and 6 were drawing very colorful things inside their body they included smiley faces they included their experiences of visits to uh legoland or that uh, them- th- thematic park and uh, other similar experiences right and children specifically talked about uh, what they had uh, seen on tv and how they related to rain, rainbow ninja or to power puff girls etc uh, i i would i i would like to ask if um, if power puff girls or any other tv characters or disney characters were important for you when you were young girl ji Komal, yes, ma'am. Was any TV character, uh, animated character, or real life character very important for you when you were younger? I don't remember um, any character being younger, but recently I have been watching movies. Abhi tak kya se that very, you know. ठीक <laughs> और बच्चा थोड़ा सा आगे जाता है वो गाड़ी उसको क्रैश कर देती है तो आई रिमेंबर दैट सीन ऑलराइट बट दैट वाज दैट वाज अ वाज दैट अ रियल लाइफ फिल्म आई डोंट नो दैट वाज अ बॉलीवुड फिल्म मैं नहीं रिमेंबर दैट सीन या सो सो इट वाज नॉट एन एनिमेटेड फिल्म राइट इट वाजंट एनिमेशन बेस्ड नो इट वाजंट so it it represented real life so people were there in the film yeah mm-hmm. so i think the experience matters because the experience that you remember is hard you know like uh, you watched mm-hmm. that was probably was that the first accident you had seen in a tv uh, on the tv screen or in a film yes yes i yes that was the first one okay and i still remember it yes so and you said you were a child at the time yes okay so it means that that experience no, that is something to share ji ji bataiye so when i was a child i used to love these cartoons scooby doo i'm sure most of the people here know these cartoons so one thing that really you know shaped my thinking was that the things in that in those cartoons what happened they were you know freaked out by ghosts and you know they were followed by them and they were you know scared of those ghosts and at the end of every episode those ghosts were people they were real life people who were wearing a mask or hiding behind an identity and you know doing things to them and it was like how people around us turn out to be you know ghosts and how people get really scary and they can do things to you that they may harm you so as a child i always you know children do get scared of you know ghosts and these ghosty stories i always used to love horror was my favorite genre 
but the scooby doo these cartoons even till this day i think of uh, those cartoons and how we are thinking of people and then we find out that they've been hiding behind you know their own personalities at times which aren't actually their personality they're hiding behind certain masks and how even being a child i was thinking of those things until this day i i say that those cartoons i think that even the children of this age i don't find you know such cartoons now i mean they are always fighting and you know bent in and there are you know machines and guns and everything and those cartoons like courage to cowardly dog was one and you know he was always scared but he had to face his you know the things he was scared of so these cartoons i think in our childhood was one of the best things that you know we got to have such you know ideas for us actually that also shows that scooby doo taught you that uh, keep miss, looking for uh, reality miss uh, i would also like to add like one of my uh, like favorite cartoon shows there was a show called wings club and it was like about like five fairies and i would like identify with glow like she was the main character like main uh, But she was the leader, and she had red hair, and like I would like familiarize myself with her. So I really like that show and that character. Yes, excellent. Yeah, I remember that um, uh, my my daughter liked Dora, and uh, she also lo- liked rock and roll kind of music. So you know, kids sometimes get. Uh, these uh, guitars kind of thing made of plastic and they i remember uh, how she liked carrying it so i think it's excellent that you have mentioned that you could relate to fairies and to ghosts and to all these characters and you were telling uh, how important it was to see the reality behind these images and to associate with characters you know because these characters do teach us about um, about life experiences and uh, yes and uh, fairy tales are very important as well uh, in shaping our inner world when especially when we are kids and i think sometimes they are very beautiful also and sensitive also so do you think that these fairy tales made you sensitive or they help you solve help you see how problems could be solved intelligently um right anybody else do you want to add anything more let me i think i should uh, mark attendance as well before we lose the slot um okay let's mark the attendance first uh rs is she not here Uh, Amna, yes, ma'am. Arsalan, uh, Binish, present, ma'am. Dania, present. Hasham, Komal, present. Laiba. Yeah, Maryam, Mashal, Jahangir, and Present. Noor. Present. Yes. All right. So we are done with the first floor. Let's go back to the other one. Yes. So let's see what children of age group seven to nine were doing. Uh, she says children in middle range drew separate images within the body outlines, but ascribed deeper meanings to these objects. A seven-year-old girl from Germany included a sun in her drawing because with the sunlight we can reduce our electricity bill. so children younger than 7 were not talking about electricity bill children of age group 
we're talking about electricity bills it means their experiences of reality are building up and at the same time she is probably familiar with reducing electric bill issue at her home right or saving electricity so we can see that children of age group 7 to 9 are talking about reality right now children a girl from U, uh, uk said my brain tells that i am intelligent my heart tells that i am kind right so what you mentioned about scooby do earlier was an intelligent solution to the problem and what you said about fairy tales was more about kindness right so what we see here that 8 year old from uk is talking about her intelligent brain and kind heart uh, she saying that children often use colors that had a particular meaning for them pink stands for love this girl from thailand is talking about pink colors association with love so we can also see that it's a reflection on her background thailand being very closely or internationally associated with relationships and love the children of this age group often drew representatives of their family inside their shapes and in in interviews they relieved parents and siblings are people you can trust so you can see that children of age group 7 to 9 are talking about emotions and relationships when she said pink is associated with love she is talking about emotions and when another child mentioned family and siblings as people you can trust he is again talking about emotions and his relationships eight year old girl from thailand said my mother taught me how to love myself my father taught me how to love myself my siblings helped me to be a good person so for children of age group 7 to 9 emotions feelings relationships peers and other family members are very important uh this this age group not children below 7 to 9 uh, this age group is talking about specific or favorite tv programs or games or game boy or ipad use right so this girl from germany she drew dinosaurs because she was afraid of them not because she loved them but she drew them because she was afraid of them so an interview was essential to understand why she was drawing dinosaurs and she said i am afraid of them because they eat humans and then she drew a huge black hole at her feet and she said i am afraid of black holes because i saw on tv on welcome in gravity falls how some fall how some fell into a black hole so you can see that uh, this um, research is by a tv channel so they are also trying to understand through the interviews about children's exposure to certain type of media and media exposure of this age group is advanced than the media exposure of the age group that we discussed earlier and here children uh, three types of emotions she mentioned in this part she mentioned trust love and fear right so for children of age group 7 to 9 uh, their awareness of emotions is higher than children of lesser age group because they are talking about their emotions 
children of age group 10 to 12 she's saying they the tweens began to expand beyond the individual images and include written elements brand names speech bubbles and universal signs such as peace sign so we can see that this age group has moved beyond families because they are talking about universal signs uh, sign of peace so sign of peace was not found uh, in drawings of children below 10 years and this is a drawing what does it say it says shape of Catalina Mexico the girl from Mexico she says uh, self-perception is typical for tweens and teens 13 year old girl uh, Catalina drew gray clouds in her mind feeding the tree come out coming out of her heart and a cube like in Mexico video games for all the questions she has about herself so the cube has a question mark and the tree is growing out of her heart. We can see that uh, it's right here. It's growing out of her heart into her head. And she has covered her head with gray clouds and a question mark inside the cube. She's saying that uh, you can see that how children of age group 10 to 12 feel. Uh, because children of these age groups are talking about specific situations and experiences. Children below 10 were not talking about specific situations and experiences. Uh, though children of uh, this girl of age group 8 and 9 did mention electricity bill. But at this stage, specific situation experiences are even greater. Alright. Tweens talked about what shapes their daily lives. Right, so these children are more into discussions of their daily lives. Uh, her feelings and both negative and positive feelings. The, which, and uh, as she had mentioned, a girl she, uh, who had HIV, the girl is 10 year old, right here. She's HIV positive. And she says, she's talking about a memory of my parents and things that had happened. Uh, self is getting more explicit. The girl from Germany drew wild hair around her head to explain, I am a kind of free spirit mind. So you can see that because they are talking about specific situations and experiences, so HIV positive is talking about the deceased parents and reality and the, the other girl is talking about being a I am a kind of free spirit, right? Uh, colors are purposefully selected at this age because they have a deeper meaning for the kid. Uh, the kid from Thailand drew her whole body in colors because she said She's talking about sadness and happiness. So she filled her whole body with colors, some to describe sad parts of her, sad situations of her life, and some to describe her happy part. So media use is also seen in terms of funny stories, relaxing stories, and stories that widen their view of the world. As I said earlier, a child had drawn universal peace sign. So children of age group uh, uh, 10 to 12 are talking about their experiences or world views they have. It says a 12 year old from Germany explains how documentaries on street children have informed her about other children who have much less than us. Right? So children below, uh, before puberty, hardly have experience of, or uh, even if they have experience of world around them, they are not talking about them or they are not sensitive. 
that others have less and we have more. So it helped her to value her own life as opposed to the lives of street children, right? So these children are media literate and they can interpret what they are seeing in complex stories in the media, right? So 12 year old girl says she sees herself as Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter because even though we have our parents and friends, we still, uh, we still feel unhappy. So we can see that in Harry Potter, we have a child who has family and is unhappy and a child who does not have the family, but is contented with life, though he misses his family. I hope everybody understands which two characters we are talking about right now. So the girl says she's relating to Draco Malfoy, who is unhappy despite having parents and family and friends. 12 year old, uh, another 12 year old said, talked about bullying experiences on WhatsApp and how bullying experiences had shaped him. Right. So again, WhatsApp is again uh, something that is related with world around us. So we can see that in this part, children are talking about uh, their association with the world. So uh, as she mentioned, there were three sides to the self, personal, relational and collective. So by uh, this age group is relating to collective experiences. Now, teens of 13 to 19 years age group, they are talking about daily life issues like peers, hobbies, media, what role these peers, hobbies and media play in their lives. And they have more memories of uh, they are talking about their memories related to peers, hobbies, and media experiences during their interviews. Deeper meaning of family, friends, and homeland, hopes and dreams. So 10 and 12 had moved into world experiences. Now this group is more into hopes and dreams. Homeland. A young girl, a 16 year old girl from Thailand says, my paintings express the question, if our world will be cheerful again, right? So at 10 to 12, they, were, they had started experiencing the world around them. Now they are criticizing the world and its experiences and they are asking if the world would be cheery, cheerful again. World peace is a key issue in this age group. Particularly a youth from Germany said, uh, sorry, a 13 year old from uh, Germany explains, I often think about it. I often think about world peace because it would be cool if it, it existed. So children probably are also learning that United, UN, United Nations is always talking about peace. And she's asking if peace ever existed because so many other problems would go away like factory farming, war and everything if peace existed. To symbolize their complex thoughts, teens use even more metaphors like a 13 year old from Mexico drew gray clouds in mind. We already discussed it. And another said, I think I am a girl with a lot of problems. Feeding the tree growing out of her heart and a cube like in Mexico video games for all the questions she has about herself. So naturally she is playing video games. She is conscious of environment feeding the true feeding the tree out of her heart. But she's also very well aware of the puberty issues or as she's in her early teens, she's 13. So she is talking about all these problems. 
she is facing because of her gender as a girl. Um, so these children are also very familiar with industrial life. So this is again a larger view of the world around them. Uh, right? And these children are also talking about uh, one. Uh, the girl earlier mentioned um, WhatsApp. So th these kid children are also talking about online environment, online video games, and online uh, social life, etc. Now, what is the relationship of gender with these drawings? So she's saying themes of nature were present in drawings of both gender. So it's not just boys who are drawing nature in their drawings and boys, uh, but also girls who are drawing nature in their body outlines. So how would you associate with nature? Uh, any experiences of nature or natural environment, landscape, or places? I think you may share. G. Jangir mentioned agriculture. So, uh, agriculture is more uh, a human activity. Jangir, any relationship with nature? Any other relationship? You mentioned Reem, Yar Khan, how would you associate yourself with the nature? Ma'am, uh, no, no any other relationship in my mind. mind. Okay. Uh, Aapne kaun sa city mentioned kiya tha? Ma'am, no, Reem, Yar Khan. All right. So what about natural landscape of Rahim Yarkhan? How do you have any experiences of sitting under under a tree or walking to a certain place or specifically going to a place? No, I'm currently sitting under a tree. Yes? No, I'm sitting under a tree because... Right now? Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the you can country. listen birds uh, chirping behind me. All right. So you are in the Himkhan right now? No, no, ma'am. I'm in, in Cholestan right now. Okay. Are you there for work yes. or you are there for... for yes, ma'am. I'm there for work. Okay. So you can see that um, this this uh, you said you are there for work so this actually yeah. again reflects on one's association with inner world uh, what kind of work yes. would that be can you describe a bit kis kisam ka kaam hai? what kind of work is it yes ma'am i am here to supervise our agriculture farm which are here Aap basically we are uh, Agricultural, agricultural list of this area. My father do agriculture on a large scale, so it's my duty now to supervise this farm. Right. Okay. Uh, can I ask how old are you? Yes, ma'am. I'm 22. All right. So you have moved up age group 19, right? So it means yes. uh, your inner world has also changed. Yes, ma'am. My inner world has totally changed. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned we can hear the birds. We can we can't um, we can understand the birds who would be sitting on the tree. All right. So young girls and boys both tended to represent more certainly, uh, more concretely. Or apne jo discuss kiya bhi your experience from uh, your work experience and nature's experience from the Himyar Khan. I think you can see that you are concretely relating to these experiences, right? 
So they are saying young girls were as likely to draw pictures that reproduce the actual self as young boys. John on a pele five strategies mentioned ki thi. So they said either boys or girls could use those strategies. Um, right? And when reproducing actual self, sometimes you could see the difference based on clothing. Right? Girls used uh, signs of gender, like expressing their love for soccer, uh, as well as slight tendency that girls are expressing. A 15-year-old girl from Mexico drew a patch over her mouth and uh, what would that patch describe if she's somebody is drawing a patch? on her mouth she's saying she's expressing the feeling of being silenced right so in herself for um, in uh, uh, past 60 70 years people will have been talking a lot about voice and i think we mentioned voice even in yesterday's discussion and we mentioned women's mobility woman's voice and uh, jangir what is your experience of woman's mobility or voice from rahim yar khan or from lahore mam samajh nahi aa raha kya puchte dekhen yahan pe jo gender wala mention tha usme usne kaha ke both genders use any of the strategies to express self right we jo humne five strategies discuss ki she said yeah, yeah. both genders can use any of the strategies but then they she specifically mentioned drawing of a girl who drew a patch on her mouth for example is tarah karke ek patch bana diya which means she was talking about her silencing experiences ladkiyon ko hum aksar mana kar dete hain to talk about certain things right so she is saying that uh, uh, yes, she was talking about silencing because she drew a patch on her mouth aap se maine ye pucha ki what is your experience of women's mobility or silencing from rahim yar khan or uh, lahore do you think ki ladkiyon ko chup kara dete hain they are silenced or they are told not to go here and their mobility actually means uh, yeah. their ability to go to several places or to any place by choice ma'am ye family to family vary karta hai area to area bhi vary karta hai ye dekhne ko hai ki hai lekin ye isme koi ye nahi hota ki sara ilake mein ek jaisi ek hi jaisi matlab ke wo jaise kare rahe har jagah difference hota hai kayi ke matlab wo jo mard hazrat hai wo utra sochte hain kuch tarah ke utra sochte hain kuch azadi dete hain kuch nahi hai कुछ होते हैं जो कुछ कम पढ़े लिखे होते हैं लेकिन अपने बच्चों को पढ़ाई की आजादी देते हैं कुछ ज्यादा पढ़े लिखे होते हैं वो अपने मतलब फीमेल की बात करो वो अपने घर में बच्चों को पढ़ने की उस तरह इजाजत नहीं देते तो ये इंडिविजुअल्स पे मेरे ख्याल से डिपेंडेंट होती है चीज ये एरिया पे उस तरह नहीं है ऑलराइट सो आई हैव अ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इजाजत किसने दे दी हां आई हैव समथिंग टू से रिगार्डिंग दैट क्वेश्चन यू आस्क्ड जंगी so i also uh, belong to a village and uh, our village background is agriculture and we are landlord or something so uh, we live in lahore i am born in lahore but we go to our village like very often so in lahore my father never imposed anything any you know uh, obligations on me that i have to wear a dupatta on my head or something like that but when we are it's an all like you know ever since i've grown up this thing is has been continuous and when we go to our village my father always tells me to you know you should wear a dupatta on your head because you know now we are ab hum gaon mein hai to yahan pe hamari farak hai cheez aur yahan pe log agar dekhte hain to unhe pata hai ki tum matlab who's your grandfather and who's you know your grandmother so you are supposed to be a certain way so when we go there and it's not just with me it's with all my cousins uh, we when we are in our schools or when we are going to our universities we 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 dress the way we want to dress but when we are in our village 
we don't wear jeans, we don't wear such clothes that, you know, and we don't have to, you know, keep our, uh, you know, our, our languages, we have to take care of uh, our family members and how people are, you know, looking at us and everything, then, you know, because there it's also like a, a joint family, we have the same house, we live there, when we go there on Eid and everything, so it's very different there. So in the same family, we are given two different sets of rules. One is for the city and one is when we go back to our village. All right, very true. I think that uh, that actually, I think uh, many of us may have experienced this kind of uh, strategies uh, for living in the cities and, uh, and when we are in the villages. Um, uh, that's very correct. Um, Okay, so you are. Uh, do you th do you think that uh, has an effect on your mobility as well, Amna? Um, ma'am, I, I I I honestly I don't mind when I I do you know sometimes get annoyed when you know that you know when we are told to do these things, but you know I don't mind because at the end of the day we do belong to that place. And it has shaped me in a certain way. It has actually made me a little, I think, more flexible the way they want their daughters to be, you know, according to the our, what our parents want uh, us to be like. And I think they, you know, work really hard, to, you know, to keeping that thing in track, you know, that, you know, they should be you know, adaptable to these situations. And I think we, I, it has shaped me this way too. So I don't really get angry now because it's been happening ever since I've grown up. Right. So uh, I wasn't particularly talking about anger, but it's fine you mentioned that it can be, you know, like it can raise your questions in your mind or it can make you angry. Uh, I, I noticed uh, a difference between what you said and what Jahangir said. Uh, when you said, uh, when you discussed that you are told uh, to live this way in Lahore or that way in the village, you said they tell us and then you mentioned parents. So you were talking about both the parents, means mother and father, which means both the genders. When Jahangir yeah. was talking about it, Jahangir was talking about, he wasn't talking about uh, both parents, he was talking about uh, allow karta hai, allow nahi karta. So that was my last question with him. Uh, kisne deni hai? So I don't think he was talk he was talking about both the genders. I think he was talking about only one gender. Uh, Jangir, can you um, uh, help me understand that um, what I'm saying I'm assuming or is it correct? You are correct, ma'am. I'm talking about males, elder males of the family. Okay. Sometimes their mothers want their uh, children to learn but study in other fields but their fathers not allow them to study further all right so what actually you were talking about was uh, you were talking about male's decision like father being the head of the family decides you said it was inconsistent, but there was a general rule for the family, and uh, then uh, family rules were different from one place, from one house to the other. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I I person to person. So I, I, uh, we had raised two questions here. One was about woman's voice and one was about woman's mobility. So woman's voice and woman's mobility, any reactions on uh, any other reactions on the question of woman's voice and mobility? Uh, 
anyone who hasn't said anything so far ji komal you want would you like sir, to raise my hand wo aapko shayad notification nahi jata मतलब आदत हो जाती है इंसान को और ये नॉर्मल बात से नाच ले कि वो अपने आप को नो पर्सन ट्राइज टू अडॉप्ट टू व्हाट हैज बीन टोल्ड देम फ्रॉम वेरी अर्ली एज ऑफ देयर लाइफ पर आई फील के यहां पे देयर शुड बी वन थिंग दैट नीड्स टू बी मेंशन के ये जो आदत हम लोग कहते हैं कि हो गई है दिस इज नॉट आदत ये आपका मेरे ख्याल से जो साइकी है उसको कितनी बुरी तरीके से अफेक्ट करता है इसके बारे में of course i'm not be talking about it in the pr from same department and she knows me kya bol rahi but i think ye class pe specifically mention karna zaruri hai kyunki hamare department ke log nahi hai and i think we other people from other departments should um, listen to what we have learned kyunki inte department ka ye hota hai na that we learn from each other so i only wanted to uh, uh, mention this Can we talk, talk about who is giving the permission, who is not giving the permission? It's not about male and female. He can't do that kind of. The point is that the kind of impression we have on our heads. A simple si baat bhi agar aap kisi ko bolte hain ki aapka chhoto bata hai, toh sir niche hai, usko thi karo. Ye toh kaise se wo ek sentence hai? It's it's like a bomb to anyone's head, at least to mine. तो इतने हम मेरे ख्याल से इस कॉन्वर्सेशन को इतने अगर हम थोड़ा सा प्रोसीड करें तो ठीक है वो क्लास का जो भी मेंशन है कि किसी भी इंसान की साइकी बहुत बुरी तरीके से इफेक्ट होती है पेशे को जितना भी आदि होगा इस चीज का that even this this thing that when we say ki hame aadat ho gayi hai it is this ye ye hame impose ki jati hai certain cheeze and uh, at times we don't want to you know uh, go in that flow aadat wala flow but we are because, because we are not given another option to you know go against that flow and mostly we are told to you know just be that way so i agree with you sir so do you think ke uh, jo aadat aapne mention kiya uh ye is it presented as something natural or it is something ke uh, it's uh, not natural but uh, it's part of the norms जो हमारे कल्चर नॉर्म बन गए सोसाइटी नॉर्म्स बन गए अगर हमें उन चीजों की आदत डालने की कोशिश की जाए बच्चों को सिखाने की दिस इज द राइट वे एंड दिस इज द रॉन्ग वे You know, this is the path we need to choose. So, ये वाली आदत जो है, I I think कि ये एक problematic चीज़ है जो कि है हमारी और बहुत सी सोसाइटी, I think in everywhere in the world, this exists. हमारी different हो सकती हैं, कहीं और different हो सकती हैं. So, Miss Kajia, हाँ, फिर ये simple सी बात है कि जब आप पूछिए कि वो आदत natural है या natural तो आपको एक सिंपल सा तरीका है इसको देखने का कि किसी भी इंसान की फितरत होती है कि वो आप कंट्रोल होना नहीं चाहती तो मेरे ख्याल से देर इज एनी वन इन दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक टू बी कंट्रोल एंड टोल के ये ठीक नहीं है ये अपना तो से ये ठीक कर लो आप शर्ट नीचे कर लो पैर ऊपर कर लो ये वाली बात आदत कभी भी नहीं हो सकती ये प्रेजेंट की जाती है बड़े नेचुरल तरीकों से 
फिर मैं कहती हूँ कि स्मार्टली हमारे पेरेंट्स बड़े प्यार से हमें मैनिपुलेट कर लेते हैं उससे कि हम बताएंगे जो हाउ डू यू नीड टू ड्रेस इट कैन नेवर बी एनी अदर थिंग ओके चलो ठीक है सो व्हाट इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाट इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टू इज टू अंडरस्टैंड के व्हाट इज व्हाट इज नेचुरल and what is presented as something natural you know in terms of uh, gender behavior right because the other article that i posted actually talks about what is natural and what is uh, presented as natural and then uh, we are expected to perform those roles okay um, all right uh, please just give me 2 minutes um, i'll i'll be back Uh, i think in less than 2 minutes okay um if you like you can uh, explain uh, you know like uh, what are the really means in the meanwhile uh, i'm just um, i'll be back uh, i have to turn off this phone and i'll be back in a minute ji जी सॉरी जी हेलो मैं ऑल आई वॉन्टेड टू से यू मैंशन आदर तो आदत इज समथिंग जो कि आई थिंक द नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल विच इज अ वेरी शॉर्ट आर्टिकल इट एक्सप्लेन्स दैट पार्ट सो आई थिंक अगर इफ यू गेट सम टाइम विल ट्राई चेकिंग दैट एज वेल तो यहाँ पे वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट साइलेंसिंग एंड वोमेंस मोबिलिटी इशूज सो आई थिंक इट्स मोर कल्चरल देन नेचुरल यू नो जो आप उसको कह रही थी कि आदत हो गई है सो आदत इज बिकॉज ऑफ द कल्चर अच्छा हियर इट टॉक्स अबाउट एन अदर गर्ल दिस गर्ल सिक्सटीन ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल शी आइडेंटिफाइज जेंडर एज फ्लूड राइट 
she drew a question mark between her legs and explained most people think i'm a guy because of my short hair and the way i act so uh, like i don't even know what i am like how half of my friends call me a guy and half of my friends call me a girl and like the rest of them call me they or them or so i don't know so this girl is very very confused because uh, she is considered part of three genders simultaneously so you can see that her inner world is quite complex okay so girl is very confused and i think sometimes we know that in our cultures also uh, plain girls are not considered very uh, feminine ish okay so traces of culture are also seen in the mexican shapes uh, people uh, children were showing their inner lives in their drawings like one of the kids said life is inside us and uh, a young girl alongside her picture she wrote life is inside us uh, she's saying that uh, jennings is saying mexican girls mexican mexican artists used bright and vibrant colors and also dark colors to express the spectrum of their emotions right so the, so the kids were talking about sorrow grief fear stress pleasure love and all different kinds of emotions and uh, this um, emotional expression traces of culture did men show their emotional expression that were perhaps more related to culture so children were talking about their painful feelings their hidden feelings their stressed feelings and uh, sometimes their secrets as well that could be under the effect of culture right so i think what you said about uh, what you said about village experiences or uh, urban experiences perhaps would be would relate more to hidden or suppressed uh, emotions or secret emotions like sometimes we do not agree with what our parents keep telling us or we perhaps do not want to live that way uh, i think somebody just mentioned um komal probably mentioned that uh, when you tell somebody to ke jo dupatta theek kar lo so this probably would happen more in a village and it may also happen in the city but people may be very sensitive about these things even if they are very modern because uh, we may not be very comfortable with uh, comments and it would affect our inner worlds etc right uh one of the girls is saying when i am sad no one sees me sad so that is another thing you know like silencing uh in terms of emotions that we do not encourage people to express emotions right so she is saying when i am sad no one sees me sad i just get on with it myself until it passes and only then do i come back out into the world so it means ke when uh, she is deep uh, deep absorbed in her emotions she perhaps is not even aware of the world around her right uh, the picture that she drew in that picture she was wearing an armor a metaphor of protecting herself so she is talking about her emotions that she is not allowed to express but she is wearing an armor that is to protect herself uh, next part is like what else was seen is like illness and hiv so you can see that uh, the kid who's been diagnosed with hiv shared her shared very conflicting um, conflicting images uh, that uh, showed hope and also uncertainty and doubt so hiv infected picture is you know infected child is drawing a picture that has mixed emotions 
hope, uncertainty, and doubt, also fears and strength, symptoms of strength and resilience that are shown in other pictures. So children's pictures are showing this different kind of emotions, but you can see the kid from Thailand is HIV infected. So he has mixed emotion, hope, uncertainty, and doubt simultaneously. Right, so let's see who drew this picture. This is 15 year old girl from Thailand. She drew a red ribbon inside her shape, the universal symbol of awareness and support for those living with HIV. So I think uh, here is the red ribbon part. Okay, I, I'm not sure if you can see the arrow, but I'm sure you can. Uh, if you don't see the cursor, you at least can see the red ribbon in the body. So the child apparently has a very strong association with nature. Here is a home. She has a strong association with hope. And at the same time, this part is very, very dark. You can see one of the arms is very dark. And there is there are dark patches in other places so all kind of emotions are being seen here these two drawings on the left you is a drawing uh, by a child from Syria you can see here is an eye and blood drops are falling down from the eye and going straight in the heart and then you see peace slogan or pigeon and underneath you also see a child leaving his home uh, here is a bomb uh, I think the bomb is dropping down on the house and the child is running away it says sh shape of Kamal the 11 year old Syrian refugee drew a blood crying eye dropping into the heart and a boy running from his home the picture on the right is from Henry from Colombia, a former child soldier who drew what is embodied in his mind and the past. So this child is a refugee, but he is talking about, you know, you can see this big gun in his leg right here. And then rest of the picture is also showing uh, law and order and uh, extreme situations that the child is probably exposed to from his experiences of Colombia. <clears throat> All right, so what were we discussing here? Yeah. Uh, Thai youth drew picture of their future and ambitions to be a science teacher, to graduate from school, to have a home, money and family. Uh, so you can see when she mentioned the kid is suffering from HIV, the kid is hoping for a home, money and family. And at the same time, the kid is seeing uncertainty. Some of my dreams, a 15-year-old girl said, some of my dreams might become true and some might not. So again, children are expressing in uncertainty in their discussions. There is a need to feel accepted by others despite their illness. So it also sh shows that people probably try to stay away from HIV patients because it's highly infectious. So the kid is experiencing uh, lack of connection with others. 15 year old girl said, I like people to understand that even though I got infected, I have abilities and imaginations that will help me have a bright future. So you can see she has hope, though she is lonely. I also want to tell them they should not think negative about infected children. And should have positive thoughts towards them. Right? And then she's saying, I miss my family because they are away from them. 
a few acknowledge their illness and body awareness though th through their drawings so you can see that these children are aware of their bodies also because she is also she's a 15 year old kid so 15 year old children are aware of their bodies their illnesses and what is there for them and what is not there for them in terms of relationships and there for them in terms of treatment opportunities a child drew organ bones and veins and said i painted my body and things that are inside my body and their functions so you can understand that uh, they are learning about inner and outer sides of the body and their functions and the 18 year old girl said i keep smiling in front of others i let them know that i am okay and that i keep fighting and i can bear whatever it is so it means k in later teens they are learning how to cope with whatever it is because um, i think as perhaps komal said earlier k choices are not given right then in the end she's talking about syrian refugees and their war experience um, Kamal drew a blood crying eye, she already said, into the heart and a boy running from home. Regarding the content of the shape, uh, the most prominent outcome was to see how they expressed their love for Syria, Arabic language, and Quran. Right? So, despite this drawing being uh, from a war situation, when they interviewed the kid, they found he is deeply in love with Syria, his Syrian language, Arabic language, and his religion, that is Quran. So the, the inner self actually showed strong association with language, land, and religion in particular. Right? So... Another eight-year-old uh, boy from Syria again showed his love from, for Arabic language. And an 11-year-old boy drew mountains and rivers from Syria, right? So these are refugee children. So again, mountain rivers also show deep love for the land. Uh, 11 year old boy drew these landscapes outside his body so he was probably feeling he was in Syria when he was drawing these things uh, one of the kids Syrian kids started singing a folk song during the interview so you can understand uh, his expression and his emotions and feelings for the land and these were very important pillars of his identity they were talking about death that surrounds them and they can't escape it they were talking about peace and their strongest wish for peace in the interview All right, in the conclusion, Jennings only says that uh, these drawings and interviews uh, showed deeper and richer uh, insights, uh, narrative experiences, inside narrative experiences of children. They showed their fear, love, emotion, aspirations for peace and traces of culture in their work. Any questions so far? No question? Uh, we are short of time. So what I'll do that uh, So uh, we will, uh, we can quickly uh, look at the next article.
because it's a very short one but before that we just look at four things that she has mentioned here in terms of their narrative identities she's saying they keep themselves uh, they mention they represent themselves through their cultures likes dislikes and relationships and experiences right so here she has only mentioned five strategies of representing the self at number 2 she says they try to explain what they mean as best they can i think uh, in today's discussions we were also trying to explain what we mean and uh, then she says actions may not be reflective of their intended meaning and i think we can understand it that in couple of places for example the girl drew leaves on her chest and until they spoke to her they did not know that leaves actually means dead people are covered with leaves she had drawn leaves only on her chest and while it was very clear when a girl drew a patch on her mouth it was very clear she was referring to silencing but in but in certain other cases meaning was not clear until they spoke to the kid uh then they said that children use at number 3 self preservation strategies uh a girl had covered her body with the armor but she was only talking about self preservation from comments of others at number 4 she is talking about flexibility like children used all kind of kind of actions expressions and creative images to express their narrative identities right and i think that's it g any question um attendance i think let's go mark attendance for the second part um amina arsalan can you hear me I think Amina was here earlier. She probably. मैं उसको message दे रहा हूँ कि मैं के internet का problem. अच्छा अच्छा. It's all right. मैंने उसको present तो mark कर दिया based on her presence and discussion so far. Uh, Arslan is not here. Beenish. Present miss. Danya. Present miss. Hasham. komal present laiba ma'am i present mashal present ma'am jahangir and noor all right i think present right i think we have marked only two students absent that are aris and arslan but uh, does anyone know them yes it's um it's aras okay aras and no i like i mean i know of them but i don't know why they're absent you know both of them All right, they were absent. They had yeah. they missed the next class. Yes. They, they missed the last class as well. So if you can um, inform them, I think I already texted both of them today. I added I added Aris to the WhatsApp group because I had her number. Uh, I texted to Arslan too. I sent him the link. 
So if you can communicate to them that we'll have next class on Saturday. Yes, yes I like to know. All right. That's uh, uh, okay, I have the number. If you don't know her, I will. Uh, I have communicated to her and I have added her to the group. So I believe that uh, she's seeing the messages and I hope she can join next mm. class. Uh, we will okay. because we do not have sufficient time. But this is another article by Television, the German TV channel. And the author is Daphna Lemish. This is a very short article. It, uh, I think in these three pages, we have some text and uh, it's not even three pages long because we are seeing other things on these three pages. But this article actually talks about what you were discussing, uh, what you were talking about, you know, what you discussed about culture and about silencing or about uh, urban and rural lives in Pakistan, in Lahore or other parts of Punjab. Right, so I would I would say that um, uh, try going through it if you get time. Ji Jangir, what do you want to say? Ji Ji, I have given you a present mark here because you were talking and and you said that uh, Amina texted and after foreign bad you did not respond yourself. So I have given you a present mark. Kar diya. Uh, all I want to say is this article actually says that you are not born with a gender. You learn who you are through your everyday experiences. So it's not saying that we are not born with the sexual differences. It does say that we have biological and sexual differences when we are born. But then she mentions, uh, Daphna Lamish mentions Simone de Bois and she says, she said, a woman becomes one. She's not born. One is not born a woman, but becomes one. Because she's saying that this is because of the training that we give to girls and boys, that we become, that we end up having the gender. So she is actually saying that gender is not by birth, but, but gender is through our experiences and learnings. Do you disagree with her? Who agrees with no, her? No, miss. No, miss, I agree with her. Miss, gender in itself is a social construct. That's why gender and sex are different. Sex is something that you're assigned by birth. It's with regards to your uh, biology. But gender in itself is a social construct. Our gender must by identifying yourself with, you know, a parental figure that is closest to your uh, conception of what gender is. You know that a woman does this, a woman does this, a woman does this, a woman does this. So gender itself is an ideological construct. It's not something that has been assigned to us by birth. Our identities or what it means to be a man or a woman would have been different. Precisely. Jo aapne abhi kaha that society teaches us kaun bahar jata hai, kaun bahar nahi jata and it teaches us what it means to be a woman. Precisely that is what she is saying here because she says what stories do they tell us and about what it means to be a female, you know, and what it means to be a male. So basically she is only emphasizing that we learn about our gender through the stories that are taught to us. Yeah. And uh, society may have these, uh, these thoughts keep appearing and reappearing. Uh, as a prophecy perpetuated uh, off and on or usko emphasizing uh, constantly reaffirming binary division between masculinity and femininity right Jee. so basically this part is just saying and this is what you have written media content is divided along stereotypical gender lines so what you have said that is about stereotypes and media content is also divide, divided uh, along stereotypical lines. 
डिस्पाइट वो जो डिफरेंसेस जहांगीर ने अर्लियर मेंशन की थी गेट वेरीज फ्रॉम फैमिली टू फैमिली बट बट सोसाइटी एट लार्ज डज एम्फोसाइज स्टीरियो और टीवी को वो सिर्फ इतना कह रहे हैं कि और गेम्स को के टॉयज और जो आप इफ यू वॉक इन टू प्ले स्टोर राइट जहाँ से और टॉय स्टोर एक्सेट्रा सो वट यू विल फाइंड यू विल फाइंड डिफरेंट आइल्स फॉर बॉयज गेम्स एंड डिफरेंट आइल्स फॉर चिल्ड्रन गेम्स एंड क्लोदिंग एक्सेट्रा गर्ल्स एंड बॉयज थिंग्स आर सेपरेटेड फ्राम वेरी अर्ली स्टेज बॉयज आर मोर इन टू मटेलिक एंड ब्लू कलर्स एंड गर्ल्स आर मोर इन टू वॉम एंड पिंक्स सो गर्ल हुड इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड फ्राम वेरी अर्ली स्टेज बॉयज आर टॉट टू बी टफ एंड गर्ल्स आर टॉट टू बी आर कंसिडर्ड दैट यू हैव टू लर्न मोर अबाउट ब्यूटी एंड इमोशंस बॉयज आर प्रजेंटेड एज लॉजिकल एंड रैशनल एंड गर्ल्स मोटिवेटेड बाई अकम्पलिशमेंट्स वाइल गर्ल्स आर पोर्ट्रेड एज मोर इमोशनल एंड रोमांटिक मोटिवेटेड बाई रिलेशनशिप्स सो इन मैनी केसेज यू विल फाइंड दैट गर्ल्स आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्रेजुएशन कब होगी शादी कब होगी एंड बॉयज आर मोर टॉकिंग अबाउट देयर अचीवमेंट एंड फ्यूचर मोटिवेशंस के करियर क्या होगा और जॉब कहाँ मिलेगी राइट डू यू एग्री विद दिस बिट्स एंड ऑल दैट शी सेंग कि टेलीविजन डज इट ऑल द टाइम एंड सोसाइटी डज इट ऑल द टाइम परपेचुएशन ऑफ दीज टू डिफरेंसेज एज एज अ प्रोफेसी एंड देन एम्फोसाइजिंग दैट यू शुड गर्ल्स शुड लिव दिस वे एंड बॉयज शुड लिव एज अचीवर्स और टफ लड़कों को इनकरेज नहीं करते रोने के लिए इफ बॉयज क्राई मिस ऐसे काफी कॉमन होता है क्योंकि आई कांसेप्ट होता है इसमें वी सी दैट मेन आर इनकरेज टू बी मोर इंस्ट्रूमेंटल एंड वुमेन आर इनकरेज टू बी मोर यू नो इन द रोल ऑफ नर्चरेंस एंड केयरिंग तो आई थिंक ये मीडिया के अंदर भी आपको नजर आता है इन टीवीज एंड फिल्म्स यू नो इट्स मोस्टली द मैन हुज मेकिंग अ लॉट ऑफ डिसीजंस टेकिंग एक्शन being very emotionally stable and you know whereas or uh, unki agar aap parents bhi dekhi to itna kaam nahi karte whereas the women are you know shown to be rather timid ya agar thoda sa dikha bhi rahe hain ki it's an outspoken woman to any decision bande ne hi lena hai bhi ya they kind of put in a scene this may the guy is protecting the woman ya yeah, is tarah ka kuch hota hai i do think the media does perpetuate these types of stereotypes or uh, Okay. there is a lot more focus on the way that women look and you know whether or not they're smiling properly for the camera or crying uh, you know beautifully taaki wo movie ke andar jab acha lage audience ko acha lage so i do think it is there okay so yahan pe isne sirf definitely let me she saying that this uh, re- uh, reinforcement through media yeah in culture it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy और uh, अगर नहीं करते एज यू सेट के जी मिस स्माइल दें और स्माइल नहीं दी तो इट्स नॉट कंसिडर्ड नॉर्मल सी और सोशल जेंडर अप्रोप्रिएटनेस तो सोसाइटी जो है वो जो स्टीरियोटाइप्स बना दिए गए हैं दे बिकम जी बताइए इसमें इम्पोर्टेंट रोल है क्योंकि द काइंड काइंड ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स मेल मेल गेट इन मूवीज कंस्ट्रक्शन जेंडर्स के बारे में और सेक्स के बारे में जैसे कि जो एक्शन मूवीज होती हैं उसमें पहले अब आके ऑब्वियसली अब हमें नजर आती हैं फीमेल लीड्स आती हैं लेकिन पहले जो हमारे मेल पार्टी मैन वगैरह सारे और इस तरह की जो मूवीज होती हैं जो स्ट्रेंथ बेसिकली अगर दिखाने के तो दे शो अ मेल कैरेक्टर तो अदरवाइज अलग इस तरह के जो यूजली ड्रामा जो ड्रामा सीरियल्स होते हैं उसमें फीमेल्स काफी ज्यादा लीड ले रही होती हैं तो ये मीडिया में जो पोर्ट्रेट होता है फीमेल्स का और मेल्स का वो काफी ज्यादा रिफ्लेक्ट करते हैं हमारे आइडियाज और ये सारे मीडिया प्लेज अ वेरी पावरफुल टूल इन डिसाइडिंग यू नो लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स इन डिसाइडिंग के क्या चीज अब ट्रेंड में है क्या चीज जो है कल्चर का हिस्सा बन बन जाती है और स्पेशली आई थिंक इन एशियन साउथ ईस्ट एशिया जैसे इंडिया में आप देखें तो यू नो 
काफी चीजें जो है वो मीडिया से ही लोग लेते हैं विद रिगार्ड्स टू व्हाट इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी नॉर्मल तो आई डू थिंक इन द पॉइंट व्हेन शी सेड्स के दे मीडिया इन कोर्सेस स्टीरियोटाइप्स टू द एक्सटेंड दैट इट क्रिएट्स अ सॉर्ट ऑफ सेल्फ फुलफिलिंग प्रोफेसी इज टू बिकॉज़ द मीडिया इज सो पावरफुल दैट दे डिसाइड व्हाट इज नॉर्मल एंड व्हाट इज नॉट नॉर्मल एंड हाउ वन शुड एक्ट एंड हाउ वन शुड नॉट एक्ट definitely i agree and i think abhi recently bhi ab people have started um talking about this case for example for a long time there was no representation for the lgbtqi community aur ab ja ke there is a little bit of representation and that is what we've all been asking for ki acha we should normalize this kaafi zyada ye log वो प्रमोट कर रहे हैं तो अब जाके हम रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फ्रॉम अम ए एयर नॉर्मलाइज हैं तो अब वो रिप्रेजेंटेशन आ रही है तो नाउ इट इज बीइंग थोड़ा सा नॉर्मलाइज्ड तो मीडिया का इसमें काफी ज्यादा हाथ होता है अच्छा यहां पे डेफिनेटली मिस इज सेइंग दिस जी बताइए आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू ऐड दैट देयर सर्टेन ट्रोप्स एंड थीम्स व्हिच आल्सो परपेचुएट दिस स्टीरियोटाइप फॉर एग्जांपल डैमसेल एंड स्ट्रेस एंड स्मर्ट फेट प्रिंसिपल like they only focus on like you know uh, basically giving more power to the males and less to the females so there are certain tropes in media that further reinforce the these stereotypes Jangir can you tell us how you consume media or uh, how you use media in your daily life Main apni baat kare to main to media bahut kam consume karta hu bahut hi kam kyunki meri field hi different ho gayi hai yahan aake to aisa chhod na hai nahi media includes uh, Media includes the cell phone you have in your hand right now. I assume you are talking to me on a cell phone. You are not using your computer, are you? Yes, I am using my cell phone. हाँ, तो मैं आपसे ये कही थी कि आप you consume media by a cell phone as well. So I was trying to understand how you use media. So because here the question is that boys and girls consume no. media differently. कैसे यूज़ करते हैं अपना सेल फोन इफ यू आर सिटिंग समवेयर अभी जब क्लास खत्म होगी वुड यू बी लुकिंग एट योर मैसेजेस और वुड यू बी वाचिंग फॉर एग्जांपल वीडियोस दैट समबडी फॉरवर्डेड यू ऑन व्हाट्सएप और वुड यू बी रीडिंग फनी मैसेजेस दैट समबडी हैज फॉरवर्डेड ऑन व्हाट्सएप अगेन or maybe on facebook so i was yeah. just asking you how you use media or how you consume media because lamish is saying that uh, boys and girls use media differently that will depend on what kind of person you are you know uh, the earlier article focused on identity construction and inner self so right now uh, the question is how can we relate our inner self to our use of media मैं मैं तो इसी तरह नॉर्मली जैसे लोग और मेरा तो बिल्कुल कॉमन ही वे है यही है कि व्हाट्सएप यूज कर लिया स्नैपचैट स्टोरीज देखनी या कुछ अगर कर रहा हूँ स्टोरीज बना के भेज दी फेसबुक पे वीडियोस आ जाती हैं जो दोस्तों ने मेंशन किया था वो देख ली मैं वो फनी भी होती है हर किस्म की होती है जिसमें मैंशन किया वो देख ली पोस्ट कुछ भी ना मिला तो यूट्यूब चला ली बस चले आपसे मैं एक स्पेसिफिक क्वेश्चन पूछती हूँ right sometimes yes. sometimes uh, people forward tiktok messages on whatsapp right so aapke paas aate honge tiktok messages tiktok messages ya tiktok mein ek to videos hoti hai messages wo jaise koi piche video laga in ke jo forward messages forwarded messages aate hain usme tiktok videos honge na Do you get TikTok videos via forwarding messages? Yeah, TikTok videos तो वो जो ऐसे funny होती हैं या कोई ऐसे दोस्त जो हैं वो interact में class से related भेज देते हैं तो वो एक दूसरे का मजाक बनाने के लिए इस तरह की आती हैं वैसे ऐसे नहीं आती जैसे कि वो होती हैं ना ऐसे 
डॉक्यूमेंट्री टाइप जो ऊपर लिखा हुआ आ रहा था पीछे सीनरियों में लोगों ने एडिटेड चलाई होती हैं तो वो मैसेजेस या कोई पुरानी आयात इस तरह की नहीं आती हाँ कोई फन से रिलेटेड एंटरटेनमेंट में ही आती है ये चीजें वो मतलब रिलीजियस नहीं आती या कोई मैसेजेस उस तरह के नहीं आते what kind of media you consume because you are saying that they are not uh, religious messages they are funny messages that are forwarded between boys uh, sometimes you guys are making fun of each other that's what you said so basically that explains yes. that, that that explains how you consume media so i yes. think uh, if any of the girls can add to this discussion about her media consumption experience तो आई थिंक दैट वुड बी नाइस क्योंकि यहाँ पे ऑल इट सेड के मीडिया बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स कंज्यूम मीडिया डिफरेंटली सो वुड एनी गर्ल लाइक टू एड समथिंग हियर मिस अगर आई थिंक अगर आप मीडिया में देखें तो इट्स द टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स दैट आर बीइंग शोन ऑन द मीडिया दैट आर डिफरेंट अगर आप स्पेसिफिकली मूवीज वगैरह में देखें तो अगर आप बहुत जनरलाइज करके देखें तो गाइस बी इंटरेस्टेड इन वाचिंग बहुत ज़्यादा इमोशनल मूवीज या इस तरह करके ओके तो ये आर्टिकल भी तो एक्चुअली यही कह रहा है ना कि वेमेन लाइक वाचिंग इमोशनल कंटेंट और जो जहां यू डिस्क्राइब कर रहा था दैट वाज अबाउट कंजम्पशन ऑफ यू नो लाइक फनी कंटेंट मेकिंग फन ऑफ ईच अदर और ही सेड के इट्स नॉट रिलीजियस इन पर्टिकुलर वैसे तो टिकटॉक पे आई थिंक सॉन्ग्स बहुत ज्यादा आते हैं फनी कंटेंट बहुत ज्यादा आता है दैट्स व्हाट ही मेंशन के ही इज वाचिंग फनी कंटेंट समटाइम्स एंड समटाइम्स द कंटेंट इज लाइक अबाउट मेकिंग फन ऑफ ईच अदर इस किस्म का कंटेंट है तो मैं आपसे वैसे पूछ रही थी कि आई जस्ट वांटेड टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज शी सेइंग के स्टडीज शो दैट बॉयज द टू जेंडर्स कंज्यूम डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कंटेंट राइट यहाँ पे इसने सिर्फ एक चीज कही है इन टर्म्स ऑफ जेंडर कंस्ट्रक्शन के जेंडर ब्लाइंड कंटेंट एंड प्रोग्राम्स सो आर यू अवेयर ऑफ एनी प्रोग्राम दैट इज जेंडर ब्लाइंड any any kind of content that you have seen that appears to be gender blind or she also includes counter stereotypes uh, the stereotypes that would probably show a girl playing the um, for example uh volleyball football or you know like the type of games that are associated with men quite often so counter stereotypes or gender blind games uh you know so i was just asking if you are aware of any media content that seems to be gender blind and shows women or men in roles that are not gender appropriate All right. I think बहुत जी जी बताइए. Miss, there is a show called One Day at a Time, and there it's basically you know how it's um, how women dress and how men dress, and it's basically just uh, the barrier between gender roles. It um, breaks that barrier and talks about all these things that are basically fed to us about how. men should act or how women should act or just different how sex is should act and um the show basically uh in this one scene it talks about so there's his dad who's very um he's very you know like conservative i guess and he his daughter comes out uh, comes out to him and on his wedding day she wears a suit instead of a dress and he loses it but you know like the, then it talks about how these things you know so i don't know how to say it properly okay which, which show is that do you remember the title of the show uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's one, one day at a time, time. okay it's so one, one day at a time and i'm sure there are certain other shows that show that may show women in uh, 
men's roles or men in uh, the opposite gender roles so they are saying that uh, if they are uh, if a girl is shown to be very opinionated uh, people would probably call her bully and if a boy is shown soft people will probably call him sissy so which yeah. means that uh, society makes people learn what is your gender role and society has created gender appropriate roles that media keeps on reinforcing uh, over and over again and yes uh, mr Do you, you highlighted a part as well where um, it says that uh, boys play video like prefer online games and girls don't. Um, in that show as well, it talks about you know how it shows the guy not. Um, it shows the girl being more interested in video games than the guy. Right. So that's the same same program. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, I think we are almost done. And uh, what she's saying here that uh, we that the genders internalize these concepts or self concepts. So media is actually teaching us through stereotypes or through uh, counter stereotypes uh, what self constructs we can have and who we are. Mm, right so media ties women to outer appearance which means focusing on dresses focusing on beauty etc and uh, what she says here that when women inter internalize these concepts they internalize self objectification and sexualization as well that women themselves start objectifying themselves because they are trying to present themselves through clothing or through beauty uh, elements by emphasizing on their beauty or these things so she's just trying to see that that is a way of self objectification or self sexualization all right so in the last part she just moves on to ideas of self worth that we get from media when media emphasizes on uh, representation of self with beauty or with the toughness so it also emphasizes other concepts i am ugly i am fat i am worthless or or something similar okay so it says that uh, it plays a role in uh, in the development of self esteem of a person all right okay i hope i you're not too tired because we tried uh, almost reading the whole article and um, if if you get time i would suggest uh, just try looking at um, the last page because it's talking about uh, superheroes and uh, superheroes and superman batman spiderman and how we have we develop interpersonal relationships with these characters and there would be tv programs there that are showing you know like uh, different kind of a range of identities at present and people identify with these different identities in differently we identify with characters with identify uh, we develop uh, we integrate once we identify we integrate uh, through identification all right um, miss i have a question ji dana uh, uh, in the beginning when you talked about the language as well so i just wanted to know do you think language plays an, an important role in identity of course it does of course it does आपको थोड़ा सा उसको जब वेन वी स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट मीडिया इमेजेस और वट एवर वी सी अराउंड अस क्योंकि मैंने शायद मैंशन किया था कि असाइनमेंट्स में हमें तीन चार चीज़ें चाहिए होती हैं वेन वी वर्क इन दिस क्लास हमें 
चाहिए होता है वॉट वी आर वॉचिंग ऑन स्क्रीन सो वी नीड रिप्रेजेंटेशन रिलेटेड डिस्कशन एंड वी ऑल्सो नीड रियालिटी रिलेटेड डिस्कशन तो रियालिटी तो हम अपने एक्सपीरियंस में से ही ऐड करेंगे ना एंड देन वी विल ऑल्सो एड लिटरेचर इन द डिस्कशन तो ये तीनों चाहिए होंगी लैंग्वेज डज प्ले अ रोल बिकॉज इफ वी अगर लैंग्वेज में इफ वी आर सेंग औरतें ना कि सुलकल होती हैं सो वी आर यूजिंग द लैंग्वेज टू री इनफोर्स दिस और इसी तरह के बेशुमार कॉन्सेप्ट हैं लाइक लड़के नहीं रोते राइट सो लैंग्वेज हैज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग रिलेशनशिप विद आर विद द डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ द इनर सेल्फ और विद री इन्फोर्समेंट ऑफ अप्रोप्रिएट बिहेवियर्स जेंडर अप्रोप्रिएट बिहेवियर्स हर चीज तो टेक्स्ट के फॉर्म में है टेक्स्ट इज ऑल्सो मीडिया लैंग्वेज ओरल ट्रेडिशंस हैं मीडिया है फिल्म्स हैं सो मैनी डिफरेंट थिंग्स सो लैंग्वेज का रोल तो ख़त्म नहीं होता फिल्म इज ऑल्सो अ लैंग्वेज बिकॉज फिल्म के अंदर वॉट वी बेसिकली से दैट एवरी फ्रेम जो आप देख रहे हैं यू कैन टेक इट एज अ वर्ड सो इफ फ्रेम इज अ वर्ड फिल्म लैंग्वेज में वेन यू पुट दीज फ्रेम्स टू गैदर यू आर पुटिंग वर्ड्स टू गैदर टू फॉर्म अ सेंटेंस ओके सो ओके ऑल राइट एनी अदर क्वेश्चन और वी शुड क्लोज द सेशन आई थिंक के आपको ब्रेक दे देनी चाहिए पंद्रह बीस मिनट की आई डोंट नो इफ यू हैव एन अदर क्लास टूडे और जो भी है ओके ये रिकॉर्डिंग तो हो रही है आपको रिकॉर्डिंग नहीं पसंद तो आइंदा नहीं करेंगे रिकॉर्डिंग आई विल सर्टनली अपलोड इट सो यू कैन एक्सेस इट नहीं 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 आई होप यू कुड अपलोड दिस एज वेल क्योंकि वो नेट डिस्कनेक्ट करते तो फिर कुछ पार्ट्स रह जाते हैं नोट डाउन करने के लिए वो वो क्लास में पर्सन गूगल क्लासरूम में गूगल क्लासरूम में सबसे ऊपर आपको एक लिंक नजर आ रहा होगा इट सेज ऑनलाइन क्लासेस जी शो इट टू यू तो सम टाइम्स वहां पे फिर मैं इसको पोस्ट कर देती हूं आई विल अपलोड इट एंड यू कैन एक्सेस इट अच्छा यहां पे सबसे ऊपर था आई थिंक आई हैव मूव्ड इट डाउन वेमेन एंड मीडिया में अभी भी ऊपर नजर आ रहा है नहीं आई थिंक के लॉकडाउन हमारे uh, सिर्फ स्प्रिंग में हुआ फॉल में नहीं था सो स्प्रिंग में आई वॉज इन टीचिंग वेमेन एंड मीडिया स्प्रिंग में आई वॉज इन टीचिंग फिल्म थेरी एंड क्रिटिसिजम स्प्रिंग में आई वॉज टीचिंग वेमेन एंड मीडिया सो दिस दिस क्लास रूम हैज ऑनलाइन क्लासेज ऑन द टॉप सो वॉट आई डू के यहाँ पे फिल्म थेरी एंड क्रिटिसिजम में ऑनलाइन क्लासेस का एक लिंक क्रिएट करके आई विल पोस्ट दिस रिकॉर्डिंग देर ठीक है ठीक थैंक यू ऑल राइट टेक केयर आप क्लास के अलावा भी कोई बातचीत कर सकते हैं इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस ड्यूरिंग द क्लास और फील फ्री टू योर यू नो Uh, हमने काफी सीरियस क्लास ले ली लेकिन वी कैन डिस्कस लाइट थिंग्स एज वेल ओके क्लासेस बाय बाय